back to you. Thank you for coming back to the Mama Yaya Bua show. This is something we're going to talk about later in the future. Okay. <laughs> Kwampa. The name Kwampa, as the children say. Kwampa. What is Okay. So, me uh, intebeka profa na ipi anamem hamfra. Hamfra. Okay. <laughs> Kwampa. Kwampa simply means the right path. The right path, Kwampa. Sometimes people think it's M Kwampa. So they tend to put some NB before the coin. And so it becomes good soup. But no, the name of the band is The Right Path. The Right Path, Kwampa. And Actually, the first time I heard it, I thought it was good soup because I was. Oh. <laughs> Not just you, lots of, lots of people. We get that feedback a lot from people uh, saying, oh, good soup. But yes, um, it is Kwampa, The Right Path. There are, and there's a reason we chose that name when we formed the band. Uh, we simply wanted to draw attention to the fact that Ghanaians have a lot of beautiful tradition, especially when it comes to not just music, but beyond music, um, our food, um, the arts, our mm -hmm. literary arts, and all that. We have lots of beautiful stuff. And um, of course, there are things in our past that are also not too good, which we don't subscribe to. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Maybe to say uh, FGM, Trocosi and all those things. We do not subscribe mm -hmm. to that. But of course, we have beautiful things like our music tradition. Um, mm -hmm. Palm wine music, Adaha music, Konkoma music, and mm -hmm. lots of different aspects of our culture. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that, and unfortunately, we are leaving these ones. We are leaving them behind. It's more like, oh, it's in the past, in DNA, So we decided that, no. Let's go back in our past and bring back some of these beautiful traditions that we have. And um, as part of that process of going back, uh, we will move on the right path. Yeah, but for my panel, so and the apoye chi, I go find my panel as an idea. But the bit is my music. Aha. I don't think I'm afraid. I'm going to So the apoye chi, I go find my panel so apoye chi. I go find the chi, I'm going to find my panel as an idea. You know, this is one thing I love about language, Ghanaian language, or let me broaden it and say African language and name. Okay. Because when a place is named or a name is given, there is a narrative around Exactly. It. Exactly. And, yes. And that narrative, uh, 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 what I'm hearing sounds so beautiful to my ears is that it is powerful it is a powerful narrative that you have added to it so any and then you. yes yeah i'm quite so i'll be amen amen and before we had a little blip earlier um we were talking about you know where you were born and where you yes so if you don't okay. mind and you said you know yeah. okay okay so um i was born in koferidia in the mm -hmm. eastern region of ghana koferidia yes mm -hmm. but um because of where my mom worked um mm -hmm. she she was almost always uh, on transfer so she'll move here she'll go there she'll move here so i started my education yeah, actually she was with um cocoa board oh seed okay. production units uh -huh. so yes. she was actually with the seed production unit okay now she's on retirement actually but she was with the um seed production unit so they'll move from they'll transfer her to this place and then now she'll move to this place after a few years she'll move uh, because okay. of how their system works so i started my my school in um Nkoko. Nkoko. yes yes um go my preparatory school then I moved to Abitifi because my mom was transferred to Abitifi. So then we, Abitifi, exactly. <laughs> so then I continued from um, class one to class three. Mm -hmm. That is primary one to primary three in Abitifi. Yes. Abitifi Presby Primary B. Okay. Then I was moved again. Yes. Then I was moved from Abitifi to Akosomo, where then I went to Akosomo International School. Whoa! My kids went yes. to school there for a brief period. Oh, okay. Okay. So then I was in um, Akosomo International School from class four to JSS3. From primary four to JSS3. Uh -huh. Then I was done. I moved to Pope John Senior High in Kofuridia. So I went back to, I went to Kofuridia. Yes. Then from Pope John, I went to KNUST. 
Pope John, I did visual arts in Pope John Senior High School. Okay. So okay. then I moved to KNUS and I, I and I did um, a Bachelor of Fine Art in oh, Painting and Sculpture. Yes, okay. Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. So I did um, painting and sculpture, but I, I majored in sculpture. So so I, I had my first degree in sculpture, Bachelor of Fine Art in sculpture, BFA sculpture oh. in okay. from KNUST. Yes, so wow. um, fine art. <laughs> then from there I moved to um I, I did a two-year diploma in education um from the University of Education, Winneba. Winneba. So I did okay. a two yes, so I did a two-year diploma in education. And then from there, I went, I went back to KNUST and I did um, a Master of Business Administration in Marketing, so MBA Marketing, from School of Business, KNUST. From being, from doing sculpture to education yes. to marketing. Yes. What yes. are all these different <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you about it. Okay. I'll tell you about it. I then from, yes, yes, yes. From, from, from KNUST School of Business, um, I worked for a while and then I went back to school. Now I went to the School of Performing Arts, University of Ghana, Legon, to do a degree in music. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I come across a rum baby. Oh, of course, of course, of course, <laughs> of course. Um, hey, that's my boss. I mean, I started learning to play the xylophone from him. From and what other people know. call the balafon in other parts of yeah, Africa, balafone, but balafone. we call, uh, we call it the jail, the north, the northern jail. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So yes, yes, he's my. I, I actually played in his band. The um, we we so he has a band that was formed. <laughs> he 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 has a band, the local dimension band. Yes, and yes. the band actually featured Professor Collins at the time. Professor Collins. Um, was in the School of Performing Art earlier. Professor Collins was part yes. of his band at the very early stages when he okay. formed the band. Yes. And okay. I've also played with him when I was there. I was there from 2015 at the yes. School of Performing Art. So between 2015 and 2019, I played, I played, I performed with him. I remember we traveled to Wa for a performance okay. with the Luca Dimension Maria West okay. with his band. Yeah, so yes. Um, and then yes, amazing. The, the the differences and the choices and all that you do this and you do this and you do that. Um, I think it has to do with interest at various points in time. Um, yeah. And yes, in my life, and I think I am. I consider myself an arts person, whether it's fine arts, it's performing arts. It's I think I am naturally inclined towards the arts because it's not just music and not just the fine art, the sculpture but um i have also been on stage a number of times as an actor on stage stage plays so i'm actually with roverman Productions, and clever white and so from 2016 to 2018 i was almost always part of every production if i'm not on stage i'm playing with a band Yes. Now that so it, when my next script comes, I know who I'll be looking for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's either I'm on stage or I am with a band. When I'm with a band in Roman Productions, I do the saxophone. I play the okay. saxophone with the band and not the guitar. Yes. So yeah, basically that's been um when it comes to education and a bit of my background when it comes that's to music but all all this while I, I i love music and i was a part of music because um in church you are always with music um i joined this this group this group um i joined the brigade in church i joined our choir and all that so i've always been you have the <laughs> voice i joined our high school music group uh a scholar whatever cantorium and i don't have the voice i just love <laughs> music <laughs> uh. <laughs> i'm one of those who love music my singing is just left to the washroom all doors closed nobody <laughs> and my shower yes i love music but it's left behind closed doors so some of us may love it, but it may not go anywhere. Oh, one of these days, who knows? Please bring it out. You go commercial. I, I beg, I beg, I beg. I beg. <laughs> yes, beautiful. So I, I think the um, my follow-up question will be that um, 
you know with all the music genres that are there and you and these four you used to be five or four gentlemen focus on palm wine music yes. um yes why palm wine music okay so um the band was formed in 2017 31st july 2017 and at the time we formed the band um it was only a jack winimo and i'll talk about a jack winimo um well in i mean the subsequent submission but it was only a jack winimo and his adadema bofuma that is his band they were the only band fully dedicated towards the per um, performance of palm wine music and um, beyond them we also had the legon palm wine band and at the time in 2017 when our band was formed they were most of them their members were um from the school of performing arts in legon school of performing arts so we had just these two groups a jack Winimo and his adade magofuma in kumasi and then we have the legon palm wine band these were the only groups that were fully dedicated towards um the performances of palm wine music and we realized that well a jack Winimo is um 90 plus and so he's not so active when it comes to performances yeah. so we decided to start this band and kind of also come and help to bridge that gap we want to kind of um bring awareness to ensure the continuity of this music music tradition which is palm wine music so we yeah. started the band right from the beginning as a palm wine band and not yeah. as any other band any other style we i mean there are different styles of music but right from the beginning we chose palm wine music because we realized that we were losing if 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 we're not careful we will lose it, we'll lose it. Yes. exactly yes. so we decided to do palm wine music and kind of ensure its continuity to bring more attention to it create more awareness about this beautiful music tradition yeah beautiful that that leads me straight into palm wine music the history of it all mm. because we're talking about palm wine music palm wine music for people <laughs> around the world who have no idea what the heck is palm wine music. yes and okay. even for those who know what is palm wine music but has no idea about the history of palm wine music as an okay. expert in this could you please oh. <laughs> history yes it said you yes it's yeah and uh um there is nothing without a root bibiano okay yes so um Ghana, say you can't Ghana most of the time the the very popular music genre or music style that comes to mind is high life but yes. there were yes there there are different music styles or music traditions that existed before high life and as a matter of fact there are a number of music traditions that influenced the creation of Ghanaian high life if you look at Ghanaian high life it's a creation of the late 19th century early 20th century kind of music it's that was somewhere there um i mean by 1923 1925 we already had the word high life and we had it embedded yeah. as part of our popular music um, and yeah. but before that we had a number of music traditions we we enjoyed and which actually influenced ghanaian high life and one of them is palm wine music we call this sega senyum in tree sega senyum yes so if i'm breaking it down into um, phrases into um then we have insa ja asi oh i love ensa that being, uh -huh. ja asi. Ensa ja asi. so um palm wine music other oh okay i think we froze again well the Kukwasi. um but well yes and if you look at where it started as conversation um mm -hmm. i i i see palm wine music medium of expression not just music but, but as a medium um for expressing oneself um you you have our forefathers um they will usually go to their various places of work the farmers will go the farmers will go to the bush uh, the hunters will go the fisher folk they will also go usually when they come back 
there are two places they will go to relax and to yeah. just um, talk about how the day went. And usually it is the palm wine joint. The palm mm -hmm. wine joint, um, there were usually two places. It's either the bushes where the palm wine is tapped directly. Okay. So they will usually have a hat in. Yes, they usually have something like a hat in the bushes where the palm wine is tapped directly. And then they'll go there and they will just hang out with them, talk about issues of life. Or they will also go to the village square. Usually there's a tree. Those yes. days you will always have a big tree where yes. people will just go sit under, relax. And there will always be a beautiful lady selling palm wine. Um, it's either a woman, a middle-aged woman or a lady. Yes. And they usually will go to the bushes, get the palm wine and bring it yeah. to the village square for those who cannot go to the bushes for their palm wine. Yeah. So they usually have this hat and you will sit under the hat, you will get your palm wine. It's it, it's actually a tree, a big tree. We call it Jibia. Jibia in a in tree. Jibia. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So they will be under this Jibia and they'll talk about issues of life. Mm -hmm. Now, spontaneously, somebody will raise a song as part of the discussion but the song that you raise must be connected to the topic being discussed so if yeah. the gathering they are now talking about say poverty mm -hmm. whatever song that is raised by anybody at all at the gathering it yeah. must be related to poverty mm -hmm. and everybody at the gathering or majority of the people will join in the chorus and they will sing Mm -hmm. So it is. It was. It started as 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 a conversation between people after the hard day's work. We are talking. We are sipping our palm wine. We are talking about that, and then music erupts. And then when the music starts, they join in the chorus. So when it wasn't said, actually a music style. When you said we are talking, I, the music that just popped into my head was um, obra or sofudan. Is it Obra or Sofudan? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, it's who's who, who sang it? Who sang it? We are going, heaven knows where we are going. Oh, that's Osibisa. Osibisa. Ah, wow. Maybe I took baby Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Continue, please. That's Osibisa. Okay. So, um, expressing oneself, and then so that we did not actually have the guitar being a part of a palm wine ensemble, or the drum, or a few percussions, all that, and all that, no. But it has evolved into a music tradition. And that music tradition influenced Ghanaian high life. As a matter of fact, I can say that the introduction of the guitar into yeah. Ghanaian high life is probably as a result of the influence of Ghanaian palm wine music. Um, we we have people like the Kumasi trio, actually. The Kumasi trio had three members, and the Kumasi trio is actually on record, the very first palm wine band. The okay. very first palm wine band to record palm wine music in 1928 so you in 1928 the Kumasi trial even though right? yes so they were three fanties they were three fanties actually ironically the name of the band is Kumasi trial but all the mem band members yes, okay. are fanties or were fanties <laughs> but they formed the band in Kumasi and because they were more like itinerant musicians they were moving around so I'm sure that's how come they all met in Kumasi, they abandoned and all that. Yes. You know, so we had that. Um, come again. Do you know any of their names? Yes. So we have um, Kwame Asari, also oh. called Jacob Sam. So the same person, Kwame Asari, also called Jacob Sam. He is actually, or he was the band leader, actually. So he formed okay. the Kumasi tribe. Okay. And then we had. Kwakanta. Bakanta. Okay. Kwakanta. And then we also had um Aquabi. Aquabini. Okay. So there were three of them. Yeah. Um Kwame Asari, who is also Jacob Sam. Yeah. And then Akanta. And yeah. then Aquabini. So these three people, they formed the Kumasi tribe. 
and they were the very first to record um, a palm wine um, record uh, um, uh, to churn out a, bo a body of work, palm wine body of work in 1928. That was the record that had um, Yam Ponsa, Yam Ponsa, the very popular Yam Ponsa. That is, um, yes, yes. And amazing, Yam Ponsa so is the, one of the most beautiful songs ever sang. Exactly. Exactly. Yam Ponsa is actually, um, now it has become more of the lingua franca of high life music. Now, when when we say high life music, when it comes to guitar, as we hear some Ampon in there, and now it has even become the name of a music style, Yam Ponsa. <laughs> but it, it, it's actually a full song. On on their record, we had Yam Ponsa 1 and Yam Ponsa 2. So Yam Ponsa part 1 and Yam Ponsa part 2. Yes, but of course, it has also evolved. So now we have different ways of playing Yam Ponsa. Yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah. so that was their, uh, um, the, the, the work of the Kumasi tribe in 1928. And so it has come down. Um, coming down from their time, um, mm -hmm. we had something we call Adaha music. Adaha music. Adaha. Now, Adaha music is basically brass music. Oh, okay. uh, we have a number of woodwinds, yes, a number of woodwinds and a number of brass instruments, and then they come together with our local percussions, indigenous percussions, and they play. So it's more like a brass band, but um, yeah. with our local percussion. Wow, we cut off once again whilst the conversation was getting hot and interesting. Um, well, there's more to learn about this. I don't think I'm going off street, off, um, off live right now. I'm going to wait till he comes back. So we'll take, I'll take a quick break and I will be back when, um, as that returns and we will continue this conversation about palm wine music in Ghana. And we'll look at the group Kwampa and its members and the future of palm wine music in Ghana. It is an interesting conversation. It's packed with a lot of learning, learning, learning about music. So if you're interested in music, please don't go. This is the Nana Yaya show. Hi guys, we back, we back, we back, we back. This time I said I wasn't going offline. I am waiting for Grandpa because ah, child, this is so much knowledge and information being dropped. Number one, I love stories and I love learning about the history of of you know of, of things. So if you love music you know palm wine music all kinds of music afrobeat music as it is spreading in the world or has become one of the biggest genres of music anywhere in the world you gotta listen to this at least uh, from the ghanaian perspective in the ghanaian you know um, music history you're going to learn a lot from this conversation with asa you see bemena Welcome back. That is right. It keeps breaking. So maybe we'll try and wrap it up so you could go continue with what you're doing. But am I clear? Can okay. you hear me? Okay. On the guitar? Yes. Okay. Then let's do Yampon, sir. Yes, let's do Yampon, sir, on the okay. guitar. So usually we'll have an intro like this. Mm -hmm. Sandy 
Jaware, Amponsa, Jaware, oh, 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 Amponsa, Jaware, eh, Jaware, Amponsa, Jaware, oh, 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 Yamponse Jawa, Obamponse Jawa, Yamponse Jawa, Obamponse Jawa, Yamponse Jawa. On this same rhythm, Ejakolimo has a song that he has titled "Overseas Life." Abuche Abrabo, Overseas Life. Abuche Abrabo by Ejakolimo. This is a song he wrote in 1963 when he went to London for further studies. He did not know anybody in London. And he said after a few days, um, his friend that he lived with asked him to vacate the place. And so he was torn between coming back to Ghana or remaining in London and facing the weather squarely. And that was when he wrote the song, Overseas Life, Abrujri Abrabo, on the same Yam Ponsan guitar rhythm. Listen to this. Oh man, the challenges of internet in Ghana. This is something to actually talk about later on. As it's getting better and much more interesting, the internet is also giving us problems in Ghana, but we will still wait for him and he is here. He is back and he is singing and there he is. And if he can hear me, can you hear me? Can you hear me? But I can I cannot hear you. You want to leave and come back into the stream? I'll be waiting. This is the Nanaya Yabua show. This is the Nanaya Yabua show. This is the Nanaya Yabua show. Yo, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Still waiting for Axa to come back on. Um, he's going to come and we're going to complete this interview. So please bear with me on the Nanaya Yeboa show. I'm your host. I've been doing this for quite a while. Today is one of the most challenging times that I have encountered. Nevertheless, the show must still go on. And yes, the show is still going on. And he is back and I hope I can hear him and he can hear me now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, even though it's breaking, but I can hear you. Okay, now you are clear. Now I can also hear you. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. I mean, I can hear you, but it, it, it's flickering. It, it, it breaks. It's not the uh, smooth voice I used to hear before. It's breaking. Okay. So that's not from my part. Then it's from you. <laughs> oh, okay. Then it's very beautiful and I... clear from this end. Oh, okay. But it's better. It's better now. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so please continue. Okay. So um, the music got um, um, we uh, uh, palm wine music influenced high life music. Adaha music that Adaha music, which was also influenced by regimental music, it also influenced high life music. And I'll say the introduction into high life music is most likely as a result of the influence of Adaha music. And also at the time we had the ballroom music, orchestra music, and which yeah. was more like music for the elite at the time. Yeah. And so you get that it wasn't every Ghanaian who had the opportunity to, ent to enter these elite clubs and do all that because you had to more like dress in a particular way, walk in a particular style and yeah, all that. But um, they also had their own <laughs> also had their own kind of music going on in these um 
orchestra in in these clubs, elite clubs, and um, they perform music like um, ballroom music, like yeah. ragtime, um, yeah. jazz, blues, some of yeah. these things. Yeah. 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 So they also waltz and all that. So, so I will say fifties and sixties there about. Come again. No, when we're looking at the timeline in, in this music history, will that be around the 50s, 60s, or 70s? Because if we're talking about... No, 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 this is... This, this, in the 20s? This is this is the early early 1900s. You're talking about maybe nine, somewhere 1920 or before, slightly okay. before. We are talking about the early 20th century. Okay, okay, all right. Yes. Yes, the early 20th century. So these um, different music traditions influenced high life music. And then by 1923 to 1925, within that time frame, we actually had Ghanaian high life music. We actually saw the, the word high life um, written um, on, on, on a ticket. And, and, and with this, Professor Collins showed us a sample where we had a ticket, a ticket to an event. And we had a word high life in there. You saw high life written as yeah. music and also on the ticket. Yes. Yeah. So beyond that, um, it went through different different um, transition, different evolution. We we eventually had even what we call Boga High Life. That is High yeah. Life that traveled to Germany. And we had people like Lee Dodu. We had people like um, George Darkon. George Darkon yeah. of Akote Brof yeah. fame. He did Akote Brof, he did Odokala and all that. So they were Ghanaians, Ghanaian musicians who went yeah. to Germany and now the way their music was kind of influenced with the disco sounds, the the, the, the synthesizers and the uh, the electronic sounds, and so it was more like a measure of the those things with our palm, uh, our high life music, and yes. then we had Boga High Life. It came down, even have what they call urban high life and all that. <laughs> Um, but of course, it's we have similar elements running through. Yes, yes, okay, okay. Yes, so, but of course, palm wine has yeah. palm wine music has also um, at the time all these things were happening. Palm wine music influencing high life and all that. It was still there. It says that it kind of took a dip. Um, its popularity now went down. Mm -hmm. It was like high life taking over or kind of virtually took over but of course we still had um palm wine music also going on and we 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 eventually had people like Ike Nyame, mm -hmm. um with the guitar bands they, they, so some of the palm wine bands now evolved into guitar bands there are slight differences between these what we will call a guitar band and a palm wine band usually a guitar band will have the guitar dominating being the lead instrument with the vocals okay. and all that, but we have things like the bass guitar in there. Okay. I am conventionally our palm wine music. There is no room for something like a bass guitar or the trap drum, the, the drum kits, the Western yeah. drum kits. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But when we come to when we come to guitar bands, they yeah. made room for that, even though the guitar was the dominant instrument. So, yeah. for instance, we had a number of guitar bands that played the bass guitar and they played the drum kits, the trap drums in their music. And those were the guitar bands. Uh -huh. So some of the palm wine bands evolved into guitar bands, and they 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 met with what we call the concert parties. And so for the concert parties that were happening, you'll find the guitar performing with the concert parties and going round Ghana, performing in different towns and different villages, sending yeah. concert party to different places. And it's one of the things that that one of the highlights of nightlife nightlife in ghana mm -hmm. at the time the concert part is going around mm -hmm. and all that so yes the guitar music the palm wine music was also there somebody like a jack Winimo, he mm -hmm. held the fort he really 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 helped to sustain our palm wine music because it got mm -hmm. to a time in my opinion he was more like the only person performing palm wine music um in ghana and around the world but of course, we have other palm wine musicians like Kwabdenyama. Kwabdenyama is also of uh, well, he 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 um, he's of blessed memory now. But Jack Winimo is like, alive. We had people like Kwamensa in those. These are all palm wine musicians. Uh, Kwamensa. Um, we got 
um, coming down, of course, Rabnenyama and all that. Different, different people. So Currently, Pampa, we do Pampa music. There's... Let me ask you again. a question in this regard. You've mentioned some of these names, okay. like Konimo and uh, Janyama and all these people. For instance, Konimo yes. was able to take palm wine music beyond the shores of Ghana. What do you think made him a successful palm wine musician beyond the shores of Ghana and having that length of... Okay um you know profession in the music okay in my opinion jack Onimo was authentic with his music and is still authentic with his music his his original his music very authentic and so, so when he's forming when he sends his music anywhere he's not just doing music but he's authentically representing ghanaian culture and so when you invite a jack Onimo and his people and he's performing when you listen to his music you are not just listening to palm wine music but you are listening to authentic um an authentic aspect of ghanaian culture and i believe and it's one of the points that, that made his music thrive outside ghana also okay 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 yes Beautiful. so i think that, that my follow-up question to kwampa as a group is that does each member see themselves as lifelong musicians i can you, in your opinion, do this as a, as a lifelong profession, just like uh, a Jack Onimo and and the rest have done? And once again, we have a blip, and I'll take a quick break, and I'll be back. And by that time, Asa will be back, and we will continue this discussion as uh, moving forward. This is the Nanaya Yeboi Show. If you've not liked, share, uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and we will be right. This is the Nana Yaya Boy Show. Hi, viewers, welcome back. We are back. It's challenging, but we refuse to let it deter us. This interview, <laughs> this conversation, will hold. Yes. Whether you like it or not, it is going to hold. Asa, you are not running away. If you run, I will chase you. We are <laughs> the conversation. Ah. The, the only thing is that we have a perform we have a performance in the next 33 minutes and so we'll have to okay. we'll have to set up <laughs> so quickly let, let, let's quickly wrap up because we okay. uh, um, so the next question i'm going to talk uh, i'm going to ask you is regards to you know skills and strategies that you guys use to become you know when you guys are performing i listen one hour you guys can go three hours if you like yes <laughs> what are some of the skills and the strategies that you guys use to become as perfect or as good as you are if you don't mind anything. well perfect i don't say we are perfect yet but we are still trying to be perfect to get there so usually it's about engaging the people giving the people what they want when you are performing to an audience you look at what they so um as the band leader um i look at the, the the audience what they want and then i try to give them what they want i try to even do songs in response to their reaction as they listen to you and it wow. it, it makes them that is that is what what brings out the okay it, it helps yes mm -hmm. so you we look at them we look at what they love what they want and then we give it to them we engage in things you know african music is such that you sometimes have to do the performances with the audience together with the audience you immerse them in the performance also so we engage them and together we do the performances and i think it is something that has really worked for us beautiful beautiful i would love to say a big thank you i know we've had our challenges but we yes. are going to have this interview proper when I am in Ghana and we are going sure. to have a sit down interview. That's sure, what I will sure. I'll, I'll look forward to that. I'll really look forward to that. <laughs> so we can actually delve into it and do a lot delve of stuff. We can have an hour or two. <laughs> yes, that is right. That is right.
since you have to go perform and you need to set up and i pray you do not forget yourself you do not forget your instrument i heard it in some interview you forgot yourself you forgot your hey, you heard that <laughs> you've really done your your research before I, before I this did interview a little bit of a research. so give us wow. a little serenade and then go and make merry and keep the palm wine music tradition. all right so this one says Yobibi. It means Ghanaians, we have something, or Africans, we have something. So listen to this one, Yobibi. Sika sika, tencha mbuo, asa se papebi, kwa ye fe fe fe, e ponso ne da we, ah, oh my god, a nyami e ni abroka, eh, visi e wo bi do a e, e bi bi ma e, ye wo bi do a e, gana fu e, he will be your I, 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 you cannot get away from palm wine music. Attached to the strings of your heart. It, 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 it's serenade. You feel the tag in the in the pit of your stomach. As soon as you hear, hear the sound, the strings of the guitar, you just feel like moving and you move to the sounds of your mothers, your fathers, your grandfathers, your grandmothers. You move to the sound of Mother Ghana, Africa. Asa Medase. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching this interview. My name is Nana Yayabua, and this has been the Nana Yayabua Show. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I do apologize for the technical difficulties streaming from Ghana. It has its own challenges, but I do appreciate Asa of the Kwampa um, Band to be here with us. He had to jet off. They have a show in Ghana right now thank you viewers we'll catch up with you next video will be a conversation with dami ajaye a physician and a psychiatrist and an author based in the uk so we'll talk about mental health we'll talk about poetry and we will talk about mother africa in general have a good one bye This is the Nanaya Yabua Show. This is the Nanaya Yabua Show. This is the Nanaya Yabua Show.